Gulapro and I had to cut down. I had to be here. I didn't feel home, but I wanted to be here speaking in front of you and sharing my journey. So I think that was for me. I think just by looking at me, you guys might feel that I come from a family of better to do entrepreneurs. Right? <laughs> Unfortunately, or that I would say fortunately, that's not the case. I was born at bottom in slums of Mumbai, to a beautiful couple, mom being a housewife and dad being a carpenter. We used to live in a tiny house, 10 feet by 9 feet to be precise. That was our everything, all bedroom, kitchen, everything. During many days when most of the people used to feel happy about the rings, they used to let out the rings, we used to feel very scared because our roofs used to leak like anything and we have to we used to spend like sleepless nights collecting the leaking water. Not to forget the long queues at the common public toilets every day in the morning. My parents had to go like one kilometer to and fro just to fetch a single hand of drinking water. My childhood was very normal. The only aspiration that we all had during that time was to somehow complete tension and uh, get back to doing odd jobs. Whether it be driving an auto rickshaw or working at a garage as a mechanic or selling fruits or anything like my dream at that time was to work at a call center. That's what all I could think of. There was no one to guide us, no one to mentor us. All I knew was that we were small people and in order to do big things in life, you need loads of money. And since we don't have money, we can't do it. Never in my wildest of dreams, I never thought that I would build multiple companies. From scratch, completely bootstrap, sell one company for $2 million, make it to Forbes 30, under 30, Asia, I never thought. I'm sure you guys must be curious to know how did this happen. Are you? Yes. yes. Let me share my story. In the next few minutes, I'm going to be sharing my personal journey, but with a hope that it involves your life. So back in 2003, I think I was in 8th standard. Uh, we had a subject called personality development in our school. Uh, and in that subject, we had a chapter called entrepreneurship. That's when, for the first time, I heard the word entrepreneur or entrepreneurship. In fact, I struggled to write the spelling of an entrepreneur today also. <laughs> Our teacher narrated a very beautiful story of an entrepreneur. It was so inspiring that an entrepreneur had built a business from scratch. And uh, I was just talking to myself and I was like, wow, must be an adventure to build a business from scratch. And when I did it, I realized that, yes, indeed, it's a different job to build something from scratch. So remember, in our childhood, everyone used to say, I'm mean, a doctor, or an engineer, or a pilot. That's what, that's what we all used to say. Right? I used to say, I'll become an entrepreneur. Although I knew that the situation at home is not good, uh, I always used to think that you need deep pocket, heavy investment to build a business. But I had this thing that I do something. So as in my, when I started my journey, I realized, no, that's not the case. I was wrong. The fact was, where does the will? There's a will. Somehow, after a lot of struggle, I got into engineering back in 2011. I was very fond of computers, very crazy about computers, but I never had one simply because my parents uh, couldn't afford it. They, they knew that I was crazy, but uh, it was not possible for them to afford that at that point. So whenever I used to go to railway, book railway tickets at the ticket counter, I always used to stare at those mainframe computers you see, hoping someday I'll get to use those computers, use, use the computers. In fact, I got into computer engineering just because I thought if I get into computer engineering, I could use the computer. So I remember the very first day at the practical lab. Uh, I went there and uh, our professor asked us to code something. I think it was a factorial or palindrome program to be coded in C. So I realized most of my classmates, classmates are very famous with computers. They just, when my professor used to ask something, they used to code instantly. Whereas I was still struggling to know even how to operate a computer. 
So you may just walk me, make fun of me. Uh, they, they used to come to me and say, hey, man, if you don't even know how to operate a computer, how come you are into computer engineering? So I was the most unfull boy in my class. I mean, he no one liked to hang out with me, talk to me, and somehow I kind of started isolating myself from the crowd because I didn't like going to college and uh, I, I was going through a lot of depression. Now I had two things, two options in front of me. Either stay depressed and quit the college or to take situation and control and do something about it. Somehow after a lot of struggle I got access to the internet. Once I got access to the internet, that changed my life entirely. I got introduced to a whole new world. The way internet is common these days, the way smartphones, smartphones are common, we have internet tax and all. Uh, earlier it was not the case. So once I got the access to internet, I started teaching myself a lot of skills, including programming. Within 20 days of getting the access, I lost my very first website, which is still live today, even after a decade. So once people started seeing my website, they should come to me and tell me, hey, we saw your website, it looks super good. In fact, this is a message uh, that my current co-founder sent me after I lost my first website. I don't know if it's visible or not. So they used to ask me, would you mind teaching this how to build a website? I was like, why not? Let's, let's work together as a team. So we started work, working together as a team and uh, we used to work on multiple projects. I started all alone with self belief that some day things will change. And now I had a team of people who wanted to work with me, hang out with me, do projects with me. I was which was an instant hit amongst the media and student community uh, managed to get five, more than 5,000 downloads in a week so it was all good then I came into the year of engineering and uh, again paying my college fee was a challenge I thought why not start company while being in college I started two companies one was into 3D printing services and another was into IT services both companies slept fairly well, made good money, was able to pay my college fee and all. But there was one incident that happened with me through which I learned the biggest lesson of my life in third year of engineering. I would like to share this story. So once I was walking through the streets of Lavington Road, I think you guys know Lavington Road, uh, this is in Mumbai, uh, where you get all the electronic goods. So I saw a street vendor who was selling uh, power bags like this. I asked the price, he said 250 rupees per power bank. I checked on Amazon, it was 400 rupees per power bank. Instantly, I had an idea in my mind. I, I had just 1000 rupees in my pocket, and I asked the vendor if he could give it to me for uh, 5 pieces for 1000 rupees. He instantly agreed, and I bought those 5 power banks for 1000 rupees. And while on my way to home, I can train, I listed all those two power, 5 power banks on OLX. For 350 rupees because remember, I was like 400 rupees. Right? So by the time I reached home, I got good interest and within 24 hours, I was able to sell all the part power banks. Now I had invested 1000 rupees and I made 1750 out of it. Let's imagine the returns. Now I decided to reinvest that money, but this time my curious mind asked me, if the guy gave you the power bank for 200 rupees each, for sure he must be getting it for 150 rupees, right? Mm -hmm. And then let's find out that case. Again, next day went to Lemon Road, found out that case, got the power bank for 150 rupees, and uh, bought all the power banks from the money I had basically earned through the first investment. And uh, sold all the power banks again and within 48 hours. I bought I got it for 150 rupees and sold it for. Uh, <laughs> then again, I, I told my investment, but my curiosity didn't stop. I was like, if that guy is getting a bunch of rupees, I can get one of these. Let's find out that piece. So I was able to find out that piece. And uh, this story kept on happening. I reinvested, I kept on reinvesting the money. So I got power back for 150, 150, 120, 
2018 and I was able to settle at a price which was lowest below which I couldn't do. Can you guess what was the price? 50. Sorry? 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. Oh. So I should get power bank for 1 more 14 rupees and I should sell it for against me. It's not even a one more <laughs> So the reason I shared this story was not to show how much money I made at slow stakes. Basically the message that I wanted to convey was if you have an idea in your mind, if you are curious about something, then just go ahead and experiment. I was just curious if this experiment would work or not. And if I was not curious, I wouldn't have been uh, it wouldn't have been possible for me to do this entire experiment. As they say, blessed are the ones who are curious. Whenever you feel you have an idea, just go ahead and experiment. Take risk. Even not taking a risk is also a risk. So somehow I reached the final year of engineering and I was like, I mean, power back for both of you. It's too much of power back now. It's time to become serious about my career now. So the plan was to take up a job, work in the industry for a couple of years, and then basically start your own company because I had read that conservation chapter in uh, <laughs> <laughs> So the very first company we lived on the campus, it was my dream company. I was super excited about it and decided to call the patient. I was a good woman. But within a day my excitement faded away because I was not allowed to sit for three minutes. Any guesses why? <laughs> because the criteria was that you need at least 65% to apply for the uh, job, and I had the aggregate which was how much? 56%. So, what, whatever companies came after that uh, incidents, uh, all of them met this criteria of 60%, so I was not allowed to say for any of the companies. I saw my friends getting placed in front of me getting pleased in dream companies and uh, suddenly it's not a great sign. As you as you remember the dialogue in three years, those that are fail on that, and then I was that So I was in that situation, I was getting depressed, uh, not feeling good. I was like, what will I tell my parents that they stay four years in me and uh, I'm not even able to find a good job. So I was feeling very bad about it, to be very honest. Next day, what I did, I thought I'd just take control of the situation. And I started applying in startups as an Android engineer. I was a good program back then. But while sharing the resume to startups, I ensured that I don't have my education section in my resume. So if there is no education section, I won't, I won't have to specify my marks and percentage. So people won't tell me. And believe me, no one even asked me if I was an engineer or if I completed my degree. I had six job offers within 30 days of me starting to apply for startups. All great companies, dream companies, and with a package which was much much better than the companies that were operating in college. Now the tables are turned. I had to decide which company to join. Right? So somehow I decided to join a company that was a good recruitment space. Worked there for three months and quit the job. Again joined another company. Worked there for four months and quit the job. In fact, people do internship for a duration longer than that, right? <laughs> I realized that I was not paid for jobs. I was okay working for 16, 17 hours a day, get paid less or not even get paid, but I was not okay to lose my autonomy and freedom. I decided I'd start something of my own. So gradually met my co-founders, uh, Mandar and Mukai, and uh, pitched them the idea, and they ready to agree. So starting up was not easy. It was very difficult, the initial six months were very crazy, there was no business, not at all. In fact, we were struggling very bad and we were on the verge of quitting. And then we were able to easily close one project and uh, somehow <coughs> we got the project and uh, from there on there was no looking back. In fact, we have had the privilege to work with brands like Tata, Bajaj, Natal, Taj, Rupa, Portals. You guys know that too? Yes. Me and my team built the first version of that too. Business was good, everything was good. But then we thought, 
something is missing. The main purpose behind us starting up was missing. We were in search of next big thing. That's when we got an acquisition offer from e -Bico. And we decided to sell a company for $2 million. We, this is us signing papers and uh, we got it. So at e -Bico, whatever code we wrote, whatever features we shipped, we realized that it directly impacted the environment in plus millions of times. We were able to save more than 75 lakh kg of CO2 emission with a fleet of our electric vehicles. Right from building the OS for electric vehicles to gamification to carbon credits, we did a lot of cool stuff at e -Bico. And the last month, I had to build parallel to e -Bico to work on my next venture, which is a step for right now. Before I leave the stage, I want to leave you with some of the learnings that I had in the last decade. Number one, do what you love and love what you do. If you follow this principle, you will never feel like you are working. Number two, ideas are just 1%, just 99% is ruthless execution. Right? Number three, degrees are important, no doubt about it. But skills has got, skill has got an edge over degree. Focus on learning, everyone, everyone should learn to learn. Fourth, Dreams do come true. Never stop dreaming. But at the same time, dreams without actions is just like pretty without yoga. Right? <laughs> so never stop dreaming. If you want, you can achieve any deep, damn thing in this world. You should just work hard for it. Remember at the end of the day, your thoughts become things. Thank you.